Investigation Division in D.C. About two years before I retired, I received a call from Alaska region where the uh, region wanted to know what to tell the media. When I questioned, tell the media what, he says about the UFO, and it went downhill from there. What UFO? It turned out I told him what any government employee would do at that uh, time was to tell him it's uh, under investigation. And then I had him send all that data to the FAA's tech center in uh, Atlantic City. The next day, my uh, immediate boss, service director, Harvey Safir, and I went to Atlantic City. I had just purchased a, uh, a new video camera, and I videoed the, uh, the event. And in Atlantic City, we had them play back on a, uh, on a scope, you would call a scope, a plan view display, PBD, exactly what the pilot uh, uh, seen or what the controller seen, and we uh, tied it in with the uh, voice uh, tape so we could hear exactly what the controller said and what he heard, and we taped it. We came back the next day, uh, briefed the administrator, Admiral Ingen, on what happened. He wanted a five-minute briefing. After we started the briefing, he wanted to know if he could see the video. We put the video on. He watched the video, the whole video. The next day, uh, he set up a, uh, a meeting for me to give a dog and pony show to President Reagan's scientific staff and whoever they brought over and to hand off all that data to them. That uh, morning in the FAA round room, it was either 9 or 10 o'clock, uh, three men from uh, Reagan's scientific staff, three CIA people, three FBI people, and I don't remember who the other guys were, along with all the FAA experts that I brought with me that could decide or talk about the hardware and the software, how it worked, we put on a dog and pony show. We let them watch the video. We had all the data there. We had all the printouts that the computer uh, put out. They got all excited over it. When it was all done, the uh, CIA, uh, one of the CIA men told the people they were now sworn to secrecy that this meeting never happened and this event never happened. When I asked them why, uh, uh, you know, I thought it was probably just a stealth bomber at the time, he says, well, this is the first time that we have uh, recorded radar data on a UFO, and these guys are going to get all excited uh, drooling over all this data. I said, well, you're going to tell the public about it. And he says, no, we don't tell the public about this. It would uh, panic the public. He says, we're going to go back and study this. I said, okay. That uh, was what he was going to do. Now, I've told this story many times, and I get sometimes funny looks from people. I have with me the uh, voice tapes of the uh, controllers that were involved, the FAA original tapes. See, after we handed this stuff off to the president's staff, the FAA didn't know what to do with it. We don't separate UFOs from real traffic, so it's not our problem. Okay? I have a copy of the original of the uh, video that we took which is rather interesting. And once, once the thing was all over, the reports started coming into my office, but because it wasn't an FAA air traffic problem, the FAA's report ended up on a table in my office. And it stayed there until I retired when one of the staffers packed up all my gear and helped it move to my house. Also, in a box I found just a few good days ago, in my 1992 tax return, I have the target printouts from the uh, computer data, which so if you wanted to reach or, or, or look at every target that was up there at the time, you can now reproduce this from this piece of paper here. And it's called the UFO Incident, uh, Japan 1648, I believe the number was, that happened on November the 18th, 1986. Uh, I'm prepared to go to Congress, to swear before Congress that everything I've told you people